So glad that we could be in your life group with you this evening or afternoon or whatever it is for your group. And uh, we're talking about a very important topic, which I think a lot of people feel very insecure about. And it is how do you have, how do you start spiritual conversations? I, I get the whole idea that we're to be involved with unbelievers and love them. And I, I get the idea that someday they might come and follow Christ and come to church and get baptized and, you know, go to heaven with me. But how do I get that part where it starts that awkward? And let me just say it's awkward for most of us, especially to begin with. How do I get that awkward place where it moves from we're just good neighbors to we actually are talking about spiritual things? So I want to give you some ideas. And uh, literally, there's no one, two, three plan that's going to work in every situation with every kind of person. Um, I'm going to try to give you what I like to think of as tools in your tool belt, and you will not only become familiar with them as we walk through this, but maybe even you can practice them and start using them and find out which tool works better for you, and you never throw the whole tool tool belt at anybody, but I believe that as you become more focused and more mature spiritually, that the Holy Spirit begins to tell you say this, and here's what you need to do, and don't do that. And So I'm going to give you some uh, general ideas, and I'm going to start really basic, so maybe you're thinking, well, Paul, that was obvious, but let me say it's not obvious to everyone. So the first thing that I think we need to do if we're going to have spiritual conversations is we need to make real, caring connections with people. So I, I know that some of this sounds like obvious, but in my observation of you, of people in our church family, there's a lot of people who do not know the basic skills of listening. So let me just tell you, there's some very simple steps that when you're talking to somebody, look them in the eye. Active listening means you're going, oh, I'm paying attention with interest. Uh, Well, that's great. And Really, tell me more. And you're verbally following them. There, There are literally a number of people that I have conversations with and I see them listening to me and they are like waiting to, so they can tell their story. They're waiting to get their good idea and it's, I don't feel listened to. So here's, here's the first piece is, does that classmate, does your neighbor, does that friend, do they feel like you really listen to them? And usually that means asking a follow-up question or two and well, what was that like? And man, how did that make you feel? And There are some very, very standard ways to make somebody feel listened to. And I'll tell you, there is no quicker way to make somebody feel cared about than to look them in the eye, to ask them some questions about their life, about their family, about their pets, about their vehicles, about their sports. And and you say, well, I'm not necessarily interested in all those things. Well, here's the secret. If you are building the bridge to make the spiritual conversation you're the one that has to move towards them. Which means, I don't care about football. Yes, but they care about football. I don't care about raising chickens in my backyard. Yeah, but they care about that. And so the point is, are you stuck in your own little bubble of this is all I care about and this is all I like? Or are you interested in building relationships? So that means you build the bridge. And I'll tell you from my own experience, it's an amazing thing what You learn all kinds of things from people, and there's stuff I would never have thought I was interested in that I've been interested in because I let somebody tell me about what they were excited about. So you first have to build a general connection. They feel loved. They feel cared about. And obviously, there's other ways you can do that, especially with neighbors. You know, take in their garbage can. You can help by bringing, you make a double batch of cookies, and you take some to them, or you help them when the snow comes and they need something shoveled out. So being a good neighbor, being a caring person, obviously that's the backdrop of all of this. But moving into that spiritual conversation is you learn to listen to them. And I I would encourage you to, first of all, ask general questions um, about their family, about their interests, about their job, and how does that work, and how long have you been in that job, and Is there any hope of a promotion for you? And just ways that draw people out. And you can share some of your own stories in your own life as well. But be careful, especially for those of you who tend to talk too much, um, that you're doing a a good 50% of the time listening to them. (laughs) For every statement you make, there should be a good question involved drawing them out. And then that gives you a foundation for the next stage, 
which is you begin asking good questions that are more penetrating, that move beyond the surface. Because when you're talking about your sports interests, when you're talking about your kids, when you're talking about you know, generic general topics, there's this acquaintance level of relationship. And one of the things that takes you into the next level is by asking good personal questions that are appropriately personal. And so you, you can ask things like about um, parents are very interested in their kids and you could say, well, what's the greatest struggle you're working with your kids right now? I know we all go through difficulties with our kids. Uh, what's, what's the hardest thing for you about parenting right now? And then you're moving beyond how's the weather and you're moving into how's your life. And here's my deep belief. Every real, honest, deeper conversation that revolves around a transparency about my life and your life is a spiritual conversation. So that's one of the, the clues. It doesn't mean, oh, I didn't share about Jesus and I didn't talk about the Bible and I didn't tell them how much I go to church. So it couldn't be a spiritual conversation. Oh, it can be very spiritual because people in bars talk about the meaning of life and what happens after you die and how do you find hope when your marriage seems hopeless and the real topics of life come and and you start, and I, and I think of this as like kind of wading in from a shallow end of a pool. You don't start by asking them what's their deepest, darkest secret. You start with a, well, what, are you, what have you learned about parenting? Or how are you and your wife doing? I, I know you guys were kind of having some rough stuff. And, and, and then you can move it to a directly spiritual. You can say, man, can I pray with you about that? There is such an opening there is almost nobody will tell you, don't pray for me. Um, atheists pray at times. So that's a wonderful way when you show interest in them and it's not just a, you know, I go to church and I'm trying to get you to go to church. Because I think a lot of non-believers think you're in a club and you have to pay dues in your club and I don't want to be in your club. And so you're trying to tell them it's about life. It's about what God's done in you and for you. And so asking those deeper questions about about marriage, about your future, about what did you hope, when you were 20, what did you hope your life would be like? And what's been the, big, the biggest disappointment so far? And you can ask just kind of um, what I think of as ungame questions. There's a, there was a game that came out years ago and it just had good conversation starters. Um, those kinds of questions. And, and as you do it, you will get better at it. Uh, you'll think, wow, that question worked really well. Honestly, we try to do these in our life groups. Uh, we have a starter question quite often. And, and uh, our last life group question was, uh, so if you could interview anybody in the Bible, who would you have interviewed? And you can just make that an easy question. If you could interview anybody in history, who would you have interviewed? And it just opens up a little deeper conversations. And then, as they share about their life, as you have an opportunity to pray for them, then, wonderful opportunity, if they open up a little bit, you pray for them and pray for them. Uh, you can go back in a week and say, you know, I've been praying about that. I've been thinking about that. How's that going? And you can't believe how much impact it has to, to say to somebody, I was thinking about you. I was thinking about your situation. I'm concerned for you. I've actually been praying. I, I was praying about that. And even somebody, I mean, even if somebody doesn't believe that there's a God that Here's prayer. They feel touched that you're that you care about them, and um, so prayer and talking about prayer is a great another uh, another opening besides just deeper questions. So general questions, deeper questions, talking about prayer, great entries, and then um, I would encourage you to become more transparent and honest about who you really are in telling your your story, your adventures, things that go on in your life. So. Um, for example, you're talking with a coworker. They're saying, "Hey, what'd you do this weekend?" Oh, we went out and partied. It was, I got so plastered, I had to be drugged home. And you know, I don't know what they're telling you. They they may be telling you about crazy stuff they did, or maybe they went fishing, or maybe they drove to the coast, or whatever. And in the same kind of spirit of sharing, you can say, "Wow, you know, I had a great week. My my wife and I, we went out on Sunday afternoon after church, and we went out." And we just looked at all the beautiful colors and we got to take some pictures. And, you know, there's something about just walking around in God's creation that, that just kind of unknots the knots in my soul. And uh, I, just, I just really enjoyed that. So instead of just saying, I went out to the nature, you talk about 
naturally about that you went to church, that's a priority in your life. <laughs> if that's a surprise to them, that maybe you're not being as good of a testimony at work as you thought. But they usually know kind of that you're a church person or at least however they think of that. But if you talk about the benefits that God gives you or maybe even my life group went over and we helped somebody and it was so cool to see us be able to get together and be part of that team or, or somebody in my life group did this for me. And just... You see, I think we often talk one language with our church friends in a completely different way with our secular friends. And I'm just encouraging you to merge the two, to talk about your life as it really is with your secular friends. Because if they're going to tell you about whatever they did, how could it be offensive if you tell them what you did? And I don't mean in a preachy kind of, well, we went to church and they talked about the sin that you're involved in. You know, it's like that pointed stuff. And... And let me just make an analogy, which I think is important. If you have anybody that's really, like, excited about something, they're on a new diet and they can't wait to tell you all about it, or they got this new sales opportunity for you that they want to introduce you to, and, or they are involved now in this new civic club and they want you to be involved in it. If anybody comes at you like that and they're, like, overly excited about it and they act like a know-it-all and they're clearly trying to recruit you... <laughs> everybody's shields come up. It's like, get away, get away, get away, right? So that's how people respond if you get over the top about your testimony or if you talk about it in a preachy way. And I don't think that's the most effective way. So what I'm encouraging you to do is talk about it in a natural way. You know, before we put the kids to bed and we did our Bible reading time with them and (laughs) Anderson asked this awesome question, that's a part of your life. If you would tell that to your church friends, try just telling that to your secular friends. And frankly, if you haven't done it before, they won't know what to do with it to start with. But eventually, they will see you as who you are, and if there are any kind of friends at all, they'll just accept who you are. If they're really offended by it, then offend them early and get it over with, I guess. But um, just be who you are. And I find that Christians have such a hard time... um, carrying who they really are in their spiritual journey with who they are with their secular friends. So I would encourage you to begin to share your life, including the fact that, you know, you had a problem, you and your wife had a struggle, you and your husband had a fight, and you had to go to counseling, and or you went to a friend as part of your life group, and what's a life group? And, you know, they may ask some follow-up questions. And I'll tell you, one of the ways you know that God is at work is when you... Um, have somebody that you've shared a little bit just generically with and they come back to you a week or two later and want to talk about it or they remembered it or they have a question about it, that is a clear sign that the Holy Spirit's been digging at their heart. Because see, all you're really doing is planting seeds, giving an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to, go, to get in and begin working in the, the deep interior of their life. Um, then I think you can also learn to ask open-ended questions that are a little bit more direct. Um, when you earn the right to, to ask those questions, you've gone through these stages of caring about them, of asking general questions, of being honest about your own life and your own spiritual self. And then you can ask questions sometimes like, so what do you believe about that? And try to ask it with an absolute non-judgmental. So what do you think? Do you believe in God? Now, that's not a great question for the stranger. That's a good question when you've earned the right to be involved. So what do you think about, you know, maybe they have somebody that they, that they lost in a, in a, they went to a funeral or they were telling you about it. And you say, so I'm curious, what do you believe happens after death? Don't give any clues. Don't give any judging answers or any, oh, you got that right or no, you didn't. Just like, just ask him. And I find it actually very interesting to explore people's belief systems. And, and what I find is often the truth is they don't have it well thought through. And so when they start telling you, they're making stuff up. And at some level, they kind of know that. It's like, I'm telling you the answers to this question, but I don't really know. And if you can get them to that place where they really don't or can admit that they really don't know? Do you think that's really true? Do you think everybody goes to heaven? Hmm. And, and if they say, well, not everybody. You know, Charles Manson didn't go to heaven. 
Wow. Does, does God decide or how do you think that happens? And just let them think it through. And, and you know, they may get, wow, well, that's enough talk about that or they may cut you off. And I, and I think that's another important point of it is don't keep drilling and drilling and drilling. Like that person I mentioned that has the diet they want to talk to you about. Um, you're not that interested in their diet. These people are not that interested in Christ at this point. But if the Holy Spirit begins working in them, they may become interested. Um, so there are great open questions about what they believe. What do you find has been most helpful in your marriage? Um, what, do you, what do you think? And <laughs> I like to answer this, ask this question because this, <laughs> this absolutely stumps a lot of people. So what do you think is the ultimate purpose of your life? What, what are you living for? And you think, wow, what more basic question than that, is, than that could there be? That why am I on this planet? What am I, what's my life about? What am, I, what am I trying to accomplish? What am I here for? And you'd be amazed at how many people have very poorly thought through answers. And don't try to chide them for their stupid answer. <laughs> um, the truth is, is what you're wanting to do is to have them feel inadequate in their answer. They may say, well, I kind of believe it's like this and I'll tell you about my ideas and they kind of throw you some ideas and then they walk away going, wow, <laughs> that was sure making stuff up. And... That's what you want, is you want the Holy Spirit to go, really? That's what you believe? And, and often they want to know what you think. And so that sometimes is the reverse of that. And here again, be careful. They'll say, well, what do you think about that? And don't think that's a great opportunity for a 20-minute dialogue, right? So, that's, so you say, well, I, I believe what the Bible says is that there are some people, that, the Bible says that there's a broad way that leads to destruction, and there's a narrow way that's through Jesus that leads to heaven. And that's, that's what I think is true. So, quick answer, maybe based on the scripture, if you can. And, and like that, you don't need even, even no chapter and verse. You can say, well, here's what the Bible says, and that's, that's what I think is true. And again, let it rest. They've heard that. And then there, then there are some of those places where you sense that God is working and there's this spiritual response and they begin to ask some questions and they're kind of interested. And boy, I think that's where you need to lean in and say, would you like to read um, like a couple of chapters of the Bible together and talk about them? Because I would love to do that with you. You know, not any big study, but you, like you read the chapter and I'll read the chapter and we talk about it. Because if you can get them reading God's word for themselves... If you can get them asking themselves, what does that mean? Um, and how do I feel about what that means and what is true? And I always try to build from the center. I always try to say, who is Jesus? Because Jesus is the most attractive character in all of history, even if you're an atheist. Um, Jesus is amazing. And most people agree that Jesus is a great teacher. He's, and, and sometimes you say, do you, who do you think Jesus is? And what's weird is people say, well, he's the son of God. They have no idea what that means, but they say he's the son of God. Yeah, you got that multiple choice answer right. But if they begin to see who Jesus is, he's a very attractive character. And if you can believe that he's the son of God and that he came for the purpose of dying so that we could be set free, then what did Jesus believe about the Bible? Then what do I believe about the Bible? And what did Jesus say about the future? And what did Jesus say happens after death? And everything is built from the center. And, and sometimes we get involved in arguments about creation, evolution. We get involved in arguments about the future or is this sin or isn't this sin or how should you respond to a person, who, whatever sin they're involved in. And I think try to stay out of all that stuff to begin with. I mean, you can tell them what the Bible says, but the center of the conversation should always come back to Jesus. And if they begin to explore who Jesus is and if they begin to fall in love with Jesus and the Holy Spirit begins to work in their heart, then you may have the opportunity to say, would you like to come to church with me? Would you like to read the Bible with me together? And, and I think it's, this is a funny thing that Christians don't often think of, is sometimes you can find a Bible verse that you think is just appropriate for them. Like maybe they're going through a dark time in their life and you can say, would you mind if I give you one of my favorite Bible verses? And just write it out for them and give it to them. And all these little seeds are part of God at work in their life. And then, of course, when you build the bridge, when you love them, when you've entered in that spiritual conversation, then often God does that thing that you have no part of, where there's a crisis in their life, there's a deep sense of 
loneliness. They, they try to commit suicide. Um, somebody around them commits suicide. Anyway, all of a sudden, they go through a great, really painful moment. And sometimes then they come and ask you, would you pray with me about that? And could you help me with this? And, and you've built the bridge. You have given that, that spiritual context. You have been able to be a part of their lives. And then when God does what he can only, only God can do, and he pushes them, then you're already there ready. And don't be afraid of not knowing the answers. Don't be afraid of, because the good answer is, you know what, that's a great question. I'm going to go talk to somebody who's smarter than me and figure that out. That's a perfectly acceptable answer. And sometimes you'll even say, you know what, that's a really complex question. Can I think about that more and get back to you? Um, All of those are fine because they don't have anything to do with you being the answer. It all has to do with, can I introduce you to my friend Jesus? Because he's got all the answers. I hope that helps, and I hope that you've got a few more tools on your tool belt and that when God leads you and prompts you in that moment, you can say, oh, this might be a place for one of those open-ended questions, or this might be a place where I could share something of my life in Christ or what works for me. And, and clearly, at some point, if you can share your testimony in a way that's intriguing and interesting and you can tell them what God has done in your life, at the point you've earned the right to be heard, um, that's an awesome opportunity that God might prompt you to do, and it would be in his timing, it could be the perfect tool. So I hope you will become a practitioner, get better at using some of these skills so that you can have spiritual conversations, not once in a moon, a blue moon, but regularly, and that God will use those seeds to bring people to himself, and your life will be a part of changing others' lives forever. Thanks for listening. I hope you're having a great discussion as you talk about what has helped you and maybe what you have even found to be helpful in your speaking with others. So thanks for joining us.